Hi everybody. Okay, back to Harry Potter. So the last time I read to you, um, Malfoy had challenged Harry to a duel, and um, Harry and uh, and uh, and Ron were were chatting about what that might entail. Because Harry obviously <clears throat> never had a wizard's, never been in a wizard's duel, knows nothing about it. Okay, so I'm just going to read the last the last paragraph. Um, that I read before before Easter. Okay, Harry says, what if I wave my wand and nothing happens? Well, just throw it away and punch him on the nose, Ron suggested. Excuse me? They both looked up. It was Hermione Granger. Oh, God, can't a person eat in peace in this place, said Ron. Hermione just ignored him and spoke to Harry. Uh, I couldn't help overhearing what you and Malfoy were saying. Yeah, I bet you could, Ron muttered. And you mustn't go wandering around the school at night. Think of the points you'll lose Gryffindor if you're caught. And you're bound to be. It's really very selfish of you. Yeah, and it's really none of your business, said Harry. Goodbye, said Ron. All the same, it wasn't what you'd call the perfect end to the day, Harry thought, as he lay awake much later, listening to Dean and Seamus falling asleep. Neville wasn't back from the hospital wing yet. Ron had spent all evening giving him advice such as, if he tries to curse you, you better dodge it, because I can't remember how to block them. There was a very good chance they were going to get caught by Filch, if you remember, he's the uh, Hogwarts caretaker. Or Mrs Norris, which is Filch's cat. And Harry felt he was pushing his luck, breaking another school rule today. On the other hand, Malfoy's sneering face kept looming up out of the darkness. This was his big chance to beat Malfoy face to face. He couldn't miss it. Half past eleven, Ron muttered at last. We'd better go. They pulled on their dressing gowns, picked up their wands and crept across the tower room, down the spiral staircase and into the Gryffindor common room. A few embers were still glowing in the fireplace, turning all the armchairs into hunched black shadows. They had almost reached the portrait hole when a voice spoke from the chair nearest them. I can't believe you're going to do this, Harry. A lamp flickered on. It was Hermione, wearing a pink dressing gown and a frown. You, said Ron furiously, go back to bed. I almost told your brother, Hermione snapped. Percy, he's a prefect. He had put a stop to this. Harry couldn't believe anyone could be so interfering. Come on, he said to Ron. He pushed open the portrait of the fat lady and climbed through the hole. Hermione wasn't going to give up that easily. She followed Ron through the portrait hole, hissing at them like an angry goose. Don't you care about Gryffindor? Do you only care about yourselves? I, I don't want Slytherin to win the House Cup, and you'll lose all the points I got from Professor McGonagall for knowing about switching spells. Oh, go away. All right, but I warned you, you just remember what I said when you're on the train home tomorrow. You're so... But what they were, they didn't find out. Hermione had turned to the portrait of the fat lady to get back inside and found herself facing an empty painting. The fat lady had gone on a nighttime visit and Hermione was locked out of Gryffindor Tower. What am I going to do? She asked shrilly. No, that's your problem, said Ron. Right, we've got to go. We're going to be late. They haven't even reached the end of the corridor when Hermione caught up with them. No, I'm coming with you, she said. <laughs> You're not. Do you think I'm going to stand out here and wait for Filch to catch me? If he finds all three of us, I'll tell him the truth, that I was trying to stop you and you can back me up. Oh, you've got some nerve, said Ron loudly. Shut up, both of you, said Harry sharply. I heard something. It was a sort of snuffling. Mrs Norris, breathed Ron, squinting through the dark. It wasn't Mrs Norris. It was Neville. He was curled up on the floor, fast asleep, but jerked suddenly awake as they crept nearer. Oh, thank goodness you found me. I've been out here for hours. I couldn't remember the new password to get into bed. God, keep your voice down, Neville, 
the password's pig snout. But it won't help you now because the fat lady's gone off somewhere. How's your arm? said Harry. Oh, it's fine, said Neville, showing them. Madame Pomfrey mended it in about a minute. Well, good. Now, Neville, we've got to be somewhere, so we'll see you later. Don't, don't leave me, said Neville, scrambling to his feet. Oh, I don't want to stay here alone. The bloody Baron's been passed twice already. Ron looked at his watch and then glared furiously at Hermione and Neville. <sighs> if either of you get his core, I'll never rest until I've learnt that curse of the bogeys Quirrell told us about and used it on you. Hermione opened her mouth, perhaps to tell Ron exactly how to use the curse of the bogeys, but Harry hissed at her to be quiet and beckoned them all forward. They flitted along corridors, striped with bars of moonlight from the high windows. At every turn, Harry expected to run into Filch or Mrs Norris, but they were lucky. They sped up a staircase to the third floor and tiptoed towards the trophy room. Malfoy and Crabbe weren't there yet. The crystal trophy cases glimmered where the moonlight caught them. Cups, shields, plates and statues winked silver and gold in the darkness. They edged along the walls, keeping their eyes on the doors at either end of the room. Harry took out his wand in case Malfoy leapt in and started at once. The minutes crept by. Oh, he's late. Maybe he's chickened out, Ron whispered. Then a noise in the next room made them jump. Harry had only just raised his wand when they heard someone speak. And it wasn't Malfoy. Sniff around, my sweet. They might be lurking in a corner. Hmm. It was Filch speaking to Mrs Norris. Horror struck, Harry waved madly at the other three to follow him as quickly as possible. They scurried silently towards the doorway, door, away from Filch's voice. Neville's robes had barely whipped around the corner when they heard Filch enter the trophy room. Nah, they're in here somewhere, they heard him mutter, probably hiding. This way, Harry mouthed to the others and petrified, they began to creep down a long gallery full of suits of armour. They could hear Filch getting nearer. Neville suddenly let out a frightened squeak and broke into a run. He tripped, grabbed Ron around the waist and the pair of them toppled right into a suit of armour. The clanging and crashing were enough to wake the whole castle. Run! Harry yelled and the four of them sprinted down the gallery, not looking back to see where Filch was following. They swung around the doorpost and galloped down one corridor, then another. Harry in the lead without any idea where they were going or, sorry, without any idea where they were or where they were going. They ripped through a tapestry and found themselves in a hidden passageway, hurtled along it and came out near their charms classroom, which they knew was miles from the trophy room. <sighs> right. I think we've lost them, Harry panted, leaning against the cold wall and wiping his forehead. Neville was bent double, wheezing and spluttering. I told you, Hermione gasped, clutching at the stitch in her chest. I told you. Right, we've got to get back to Gryffindor Tower, said Ron, quickly as possible. <sighs> Malfoy tricked you, Hermione said to Harry. You realise that, don't you? He was never going to meet you. Filch knew someone was going to be in the trophy room. Malfoy must have tipped him off. Harry thought that she was probably right, but he wasn't going to tell her that. <sighs> right, let's go. It wasn't going to be that simple. They hadn't gone more than a dozen paces when a doorknob rattled and something came shooting out of a classroom in front of them. It was Peeves. He caught sight of them and gave a squeal of delight. Oh, shut up, Peeves, please. You'll get us thrown out. Peeves cackled. Oh, wandering around at midnight, it called firsties, tut tut tut, naughty naughty, you'll get caughty. So, not if you don't give us away, Peeves, please. Oh, should I tell Filch? said Peeves in a saintly voice, but his eyes glittered wickedly. It's for your own good, you know. Oh, get out of the way, snapped Ron, taking a swipe at Peeves. This was a big mistake. Students, out of bed, P 
Peeves bellowed. Students out of bed down the Charms Corridor! Ducking under Peeves, they ran for their lives right to the end of the corridor where they slammed into a door and it was locked. This is it, Ron moaned as they pushed helplessly at the door. <laughs> We're done for. This is the end. They could hear footsteps, Filch running as fast as he could towards Peeves' shouts. Oh, move over, Hermione snarled. She grabbed Harry's wand, tapped the lock and whispered, Allo Amora. The, lo the lock clicked and the door swung open. They piled through it, shut it quickly and pressed their ears against it, listening. Okay, end of part one.